Yo boys, it's Dan. Welcome to the first Premier League video of the new season. Boy, we have got a video for you. First game week, two guests. What is going to happen in this season Premier League? Find out with the Premier League predictions for game week number one. Welcome to game week number one, game week number one of the Premier League season, the first Premier League video of the season. Ten shit second video, but yeah. Two guests, ten games, let's rattle through these games because we want to get on with the season. And we're starting off with Friday night's game, which is Man which is Burnley versus Man City. Vincent Company in the Premier League against Pep Guardiola. Burnley came up. Well, for fuck's sake, hang on. Burnley came up. Burnley came up last season as champions of the. Is it filming still? Yeah. As the champion, as championship winners, Man City won the Premier League. And I'm going to say, you'd expect Man City to be too strong. Man City will win it. Two goals to nil. And we have not one, but two guests. We have Mr. Charlie V, who's back. And for the first time, for, for the first time, I think, for the first time in a Premier League video, Jack is going off on game number one. So those are the two guests this week. And boys, go for your first prediction videos. For your first game predictions of the season. Hello, good uh, afternoon, evening, uh, morning, whenever you're seeing this uh, video. Um, firstly, I want to thank Dan for the opportunity for coming on to do the Premier League predictions um, for the first game week. I'm really looking forward to this Prem season. Um, to be honest, it's nice to see people like Luton and Thingy in there as well. So. Um, We'll go through the game week one to begin with. Um, those who don't know me, I'm vague. I'm a content creator on Twitch, predominantly a part timer at the minute, um, due to at the minute my setup's not being correct and things like that. So I'm just a viewer, just a fan of viewer. So, um, but yeah, if you check me out on my Twitter, I should be able to be active. But usually it's Discord I'm active on at the minute. But um, yeah, thank you, Dan, for including me on. on and thinking about me for these Premier League predictions, I really am looking forward to this section. Um, I'm going to go through it one by one. Start with Friday the 11th of August, which is for me as of recording this Friday. I'm recording this on Tuesday. So we'll see how we get on with those. Um, to begin with, we've got Burnley and Man City. Um, for me, Man City coming off Sunday, Man City lost obviously the community shield on penalties to um, Arsenal so for me Burnley may have caused it could cause an upset in this um, but I think Man City are too dominant I think they'll prove themselves again I'm, I'm going to go with a 3-1 away win for Manchester City and Burnley are playing at home they are they have gone up um, it made it easy I wonder if Vincent Company is going to improve his form but we'll see but I'm going Man City 3-1 um, yes guys, another Premier League season is upon us and a big big thanks to Dan for getting me back on as the first guest on his channel for the new Premier League predictions for the 2023-2024 season man. I'm looking forward to getting into these games as I say it is great that the Premier League back this weekend and um, yeah obviously get a, get, make sure you subscribe to Dan, drop the video a like. And uh, let's jump into our first prediction man. So we start off with the Friday night game, it's Burnley against Manchester City. Um, Listen, I mean, obviously the Carabao Cup last week. Um, I didn't see it because obviously United, the United game, the United, well, the United preseason games was not at the same time. But um, 
Burnley against Man City. Obviously, Man City lost the Carabao Cup. Late goal by Arsenal, and then obviously Arsenal won on penalties. So, City are coming to this game, obviously, they're on, on a loss, right? I cannot see anything other than a Man City win in this one, though. Um, I'm going to say 3-1 on the night to Man City. A pretty comfortable opener for them. I've done my own Premier League predictions video last week on my own channel. Um... And uh, I was saying about how Burnley, I think, if any team from the t three promoted teams this year are going to stay up, I think Burnley are the most likely, man. Obviously, their game their game style under company the last year or two, why she's been at the club, has been a lot different than maybe we would associate with Burnley in, in, in previous years. So, uh, in terms of that gritty football, second ball, you know, um, long ball, etc. So, yeah, as I say, I think their, their play style now has changed a lot. And I think this season they'll be fine in terms of relegation. They'll, they'll stay up. But for this game here, I'm going nothing other than the City win, and I'm going 3-1. All right. And we move to Saturday, starting off with Arsenal versus Nottingham Forest. Now, Ars now Forest were the team that helped Man City win the Premier League title last season. And Forest also had just... Survived basically that result last season basically kept them up. And Arsenal, you'd assume Arsenal, you'd assume Arsenal to win it, but I don't think Forest will want to. Forest will push, fucking hell. Forest will want to, want to give them a game. I'm going to go for two or draw. And the boys, what are you saying in this game? At half 12 kickoff on Saturday, Arsenal, Nottingham Forest. Uh, yet again, I'm going to go with a comfortable Arsenal win. Nottingham Forest is one of the teams that I have um, kind of tipped to go down this year. Um, they they stayed up by the skin of their teeth last year, and I think their home form was a big, obviously. Their home form was exactly what, what kept them up. Um, can their home form keep them up again? I'm not so sure. I do predict they're going to go down this season, and Arsenal are looking good. I think Arsenal will have another great season. I predict them to be to finish second again this year, but to have another very, very solid season. Um, and yeah, I think for this one, similar to City, I think it'll be a nice opener for Arsenal. Comfortable enough game, and I'm going with a 3-0 Arsenal win. Bournemouth. Moving on to the Saturday, we've got Arsenal against Notts Forest. Um, since Arsenal, how Arsenal looked in that community shield, I can't not back them against Notts Forest. I think a Notts Forest team where they've not really performed or had any key major signings I think for me Forrest are in trouble this season um, I, I could see them going down potentially but I'm going to go with a 2-0 Arsenal win uh, then we go to the first top kick to AFC Bournemouth versus West Ham United West Ham start life without Declan Weiss but they have just signed, or agreed to sign Harry Maguire, yes, from Manchester United. They've also done James Ward-Prowse as well, and also Uli no, no, Elverson Alvarez from Ajax as well. So that's three signings, all defensively minor players. So yeah, West Ham and Bournemouth, Clive that's in. West Ham won a, won a, won a, her better season than, than they did last year. 2 0 to West Ham United. And the boys, what are you saying in this game? Also, we've got Bournemouth West Ham. I'll briefly go over Bournemouth West Ham. I think Bournemouth and West Ham are both two mid table teams this season. Um, battling out. I think it would just be a stat. West Ham do look better to side, but. Bournemouth, Bournemouth was struggling last season. Without their manager, I, I think they would have went down. But, um, yeah, for me, that's a one-all draw, that game, because Bournemouth are at home, West Ham are away, and they've got the fans. Uh, then we to guess West Ham then, next game. Um, I'll keep this one short and sweet. I think this one is going to end in a draw. Both teams, as I say, West Ham were not great last season. They obviously did pick up a trophy, though. They did pick up, obviously, the Conference League. As I say, I think West Ham... I mean, right at the time of recording this, they're looking at uh, McTominay and Maguire at United. I think Maguire's more advanced. I think Harry Maguire might be going to West Ham. That's the the rumour out of uh, today's transfer mill, I guess. Transfer rumour mill. But, um, yeah, Maguire looks to be going there. McTominay could be going there. 
Um, but yeah, so they're certainly gonna they're gonna bring more players in to strengthen them over the win before the, the window ends. But um, Rice is a big miss for them, and I'm gonna go with a draw on this opening match week with a one-all draw between Bournemouth and West Ham. Brighton again. Now we move to Brighton and Hove Albion versus Luton Town. Yes, Brighton versus Luton. Brighton have just lost Davinson, Dav, um, Robert Sanchez to Chelsea, but Luton Town, they have the first time they're in the Premier League. Congratulations, Luton Town. You deserve, to be fair, I don't know how you're going to play in the Premier League this season, but you've got, you're, you, to be fair, you haven't even got a home game. Their first home game of the season it actually is postponed because they haven't got a home game. But this is away from home. How they come out, they'll have nerves. They will have so many, many nerves here. And I'm going to say that they will just be pipped by two goals to one. To Brighton will win that 2-1. And the guests, what are you saying in this game? It's Luton then, Brighton at home. I'm going with a Brighton winning this one. Short and sweet again. Um, Luton, obviously a new, new, newly promoted team. A lot of people are, are predicting Luton go down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say they're gonna stay up this season. Uh, might be a bit naive, but I'm gonna, I, I don't know much about them. You know, I don't think many people, unless you're a Luton fan, know much about them. But fair play to them for getting up as a small club and getting up to the Prem, and they've done incredibly well to even be in the Prem this year. Um, and yeah, I'd like to see them stay up, man. But in this game. Brighton, obviously, they'll be fighting for European places this year. Um, there's a lot of, there's a, you know, a couple of teams in that. You know, Aston Villa the same, which we'll get on to in a bit. You've got Brighton. You've got Newcastle. You've got those teams that are pushing, trying to get into that, maybe, maybe even a Champions League place. You, you just don't know. Obviously, we'll see how the season unfolds as we get through the match weeks. But, yeah, I think for this one, I'm going with a 2-0 Brighton win. Um, yeah, as I say, I think Luton, Luton might, be, might be all right this season. I really hope they do. I'd like to see them stay up. But I think for this first match week, Brighton... Had a good season last year. Um, I think they'll win this comfortably. 2 0 from Brighton against Luton. Now, Brighton, for me, will do well this season. I think they'll finish around 7th, 8th this season. They've got a good chance of pushing towards those uh, European places. But we'll, we'll see. They've got some tough competition this year against especially the top six and Newcastle coming in. So we'll, we'll find out. Um, Luton, however, on the other hand, are looking for survival. Their main goal in the Premier League at the minute is for survival. And I don't think they have the quality. They haven't signed anyone good. Um, and they're away from home on their first game of the season. Could could potentially be a riot, but we don't know yet. Um, I reckon it's going to be a... What do I predict for this one? I'm going to go 2-0 Brighton again. I think Lewin don't have the capacity to score. I don't think they've all done good business for the Premier League. I think they were mainly trying to get their stadium intact, really, for it. So, um, yeah, I'll go with a Brighton 2-0 win. Uh, now we move to Everton versus Fulham. Now, Fulham have signed Wal Jimenez from Wolves. And Everton... I mean, they got they signed they have loaned Dan Juma, the guy who Spurs had for the remain for the last six months of the season. Who didn't do very well, but I think a full season of the Premier League he could do that. He could do that team well. But I'm gonna say it'll be my it'll be my second draw. It'll be a it'll be a score. It'll be a, it'll be a board draw. Nil nil, I think. But I don't know it's gonna be a nil nil. But now we guess what are you going for in this game? Everton moving on to Everton against Fulham. Um, two teams mid table again. I'm not really going to speak on this too much. Um, I think it's two bog standard mid table teams battling it out for three points. Um, and I could see Everton coming away with a win here, home for the first game of the season. I think they'll be looking for they'll be more up for it compared with last season. Fulham had a really good last season, really good last season actually, um, finishing just I think above mid table, which is impressive for them. Um, if not around mid table, which is Impressive for a team that they thought was going to get relegated last season. I think Fulham will still rebound and rebuild, but having Mitrovic in their team has made them better. Um, I'm going to go with a 1-0 win for Everton. I think it'll be a 0-0 or a scrappy game, but 
but I think Everton will just put out a result. Me. Everton against Fulham then is the next game and I'm going with a draw on this one uh, Everton yet again had their scars relegation wise last year um, this year though I don't think don't think they'll be as bad um, I could be very much I could be very wrong but uh, I don't think they'll be as bad this year I don't think, expect them to obviously break into like a top 10 finish or anything like that there um, you know they certainly haven't made the signings to, to suggest that they're, they're going to be doing that but I don't think they'll have any problem with relegation this year I think I, Ever, I think Everton around maybe 13th 14th this year is my prediction for them um, and in this first match week, I'm going going to go with a draw. Um, Everton are at home. We know Goodison Park can obviously be, um, you know, especially first day of the season. It can be a, it can be a tricky ground to go to sometimes, man. Especially when the Everton fans are up and who isn't up with the start of a new season, right? So yeah, Fulham are a decent t decent team, a decent side. They played well last year. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with a two all draw on this one. A, a, a score draw. Um, a lot of goals in this one. Four goals. I'm going to go with a two all draw between Everton and Fulham. We go now. We move to the last newly promoted team in Sheffield United versus Crystal Palace. Now, let's start off with Crystal Palace. They have lost their main star in Wilfred Zaha. Yes, Wilfred Zaha is no longer a Crystal Palace player. He has flown the coop and he's gone to Galatasaray in in Turkey, but they still got Roy Hodgson signed another deal. How on earth has Roy Hodgson secured another year at Palace? I don't know. But, I mean, Sheffield United, they want to they wanna impress like Burnley and Luton Town. I think they'll be one of the, they can't say, if you haven't gone and seen my table print up on Monday, I would recommend going to watch that because that is an absolute bang of a, of a video. But I'm going to say Sheffield United will just will pip it. 1-0, Sheffield United to win one goal to nil against Palace because, and the guests, what are you saying in this game? Sheffield United then against Crystal Palace, um, newly promoted, the last newly promoted team we're going to talk about here, obviously Sheffield United, um, I think they're going to lose this opening game. They are at home, um, and obviously they're back in the Prem. They're I think they will lose this first game, but obviously, you know, the start of a new season, they're back in the Prem, they're home at Bramall Lane in the first game against Palace. I think I think they have a chance, but I, I, I think Palace will win this one. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Palace win. Um, I'm just not sure whether Sheffield United have the quality. I, they're another one of the teams I think this year could potentially just rebound back down again. But time will tell, of course, as we, as we, as we will see. But, um, yeah, for this first game, their home fans, if they win it, their home fans will be obviously imperative in that, and they, they could be. Obviously, they're they're back in the Prem, as I say, and their first game is at home, so the place will be bouncing, of course, and rightly so. But, yeah, I think going to go a Palace win, 2-1 this. Uh, moving on to the next game, Sheffield United against Crystal Palace. Now, for me, Sheffield United has just come up, and it seems like they could, honestly, if they have back in, they could, they could stay up this season, but... I don't know whether they're playing in teams where Tottenham, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United are going to keep coming through, Newcastle, they're going to keep showing talent and having quality players. So for me, this game, I, I think Palace, keeping Roy Hodgson as their manager is interesting. But for me, it's a, it's for me, it's going to be a 2-0 win to um, Palace. I think Palace away from home also have a good record. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me if they're wrong, but I'm going Crystal Palace 2-0 win. Uh, then we... Now we move to Champions League bound. As... Now we move to Champions League to Newcastle versus Aston Villa. Now Newcastle finished in third and fourth. It's got them Champions League football for, next, for this season. Yes, and there will be Champions League and Europa Leagues in the coming weeks and months of the season and years. But yeah, and Aston Villa. Well, let's just start off with um thing. They've signed. They've signed Levante for the future. They've signed Sandro Tonali from AC Milan. They've also signed Harvey Barnes from um Newcastle. No, from Leicester who went down. And Aston Villa. They signed Pau Torres and Moussa Diaby. Uh, and Villarreal, a former Villarreal player and a former Bayer Leverkusen player. But I think this game could be an absolute banger in the Toon army. For the Toon, I'm going to say 
it will be 3-2 Aston Villa, a goal fest. It might not be a goal fest for the start of the season, but you see some scores in the, in the Championship, Barnsley being put us at 7 nil, so anything can happen in the Premier League. And the guests, what are you saying in this game? On to the 5-30 game, we've got Newcastle against Aston Villa. Yes, this is the game to watch this this weekend. I don't care about Chelsea. People say, oh, Chelsea, Tottenham, Man United, Wolves, Burnley, and Arsenal. No. Um, for me, this is a game in this weekend, uh, this 5.30 game, because Newcastle are a team up in form, up in Champions League places, getting points, getting things done. And it's nice to see Newcastle in a round and doing good business. Uh, similarly, with Aston Villa. I mean, who they've picked up over the past. Nusa Diaby's come in from Bayern Leverkusen. I mean, that's a pick-up. That's a steal. I'm looking forward to seeing what Diaby can do this season. As a Villa fan, well, as, I'm not a Villa fan, but Villa fans seem excited for him coming in and what they've done. A lot of people have high hopes for Villa this season. Um, I'm going to go with a one or draw for this game. I think it'll be a draw for this one. Um, Moving on to Saturday. really tasty half five game for the opening match week on the Saturday evening. We've got Newcastle against Aston Villa. So James's Park will be uh, absolutely buzzing on uh, on Saturday evening for this game. Um, Newcastle, obviously, another team and Villa this year pushing for certainly European place, but maybe even into that top four, right? So um, with this game, I'm going to go draw. Um, it seems like a logical result. Both teams played very very well last year. They had a great both great seasons. We'll see Newcastle playing Champions League football this year as well, so they'll be hoping to retain a top four place this year as well. But yeah, I'm going to go with a one all draw on this between Newcastle and Aston Villa. As I say, certainly two teams on the up. Let's see how that game unfolds at half five on Saturday. Brent, and we move to our first London derby of the season, which is the which is Brentford versus Tottenham Hotspur. And Postacoglu's first game in charge of the Spurs. How will he play? How will he how will he set up Spurs with their new signings in Madison? And they've been a lot of offensive changes of Spurs. Like they brought in Van der Ver, Van Van der Berg, or whatever. How however the monkey you say his name, a goalkeeper from Italy, and all sorts of weird players as well. And Madison as well. He's helped get Madison here. And Brentford, I assume Brentford will obviously be realistic. They're Brentford there. Good, they're Brentford, they'll stay very high. So I'm going to say Spurs to win it 2-1. And the guests, what are you saying in this game now? Spurs against Spurs, moving into the two games on Sunday then, all right? The first Super Sunday of the season. Brentford against Spurs, I'm going to go with a Spurs win. Um, very interesting to see how Angie, uh, uh, Angie Postacoglu does under, uh, under Spurs management this year. Um, let's see, let's see. He's done good in the Scottish League. Will he bring that to the Prem? Time will tell. But I think Spurs away to Brentford opening match week. I think we'll get a win. Brentford are one of those tricky teams that for la last season where they were a match for most teams. Um, they cause a lot of teams problems. Obviously, you haven't not having Ivan Tony though is a big miss for them. Um, starting off this season. So yeah, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a Spurs win. I'm gonna go with three one to Spurs in this one. Sunday, Brentford against Tottenham, London derby. Um, Brentford. I haven't seen much business on Brentford actually. I'm not clued up too much on transfers at the minute and what's going on because transfers are still happening up until the 31st of August and we're in the month of August on the 8th I'm recording this so we'll see uh, Spurs I mean they've been I've seen their pre-season friendly game against Shatter the Nets the other day and I thought I thought they looked good I think I'm wondering to see where Harry Kane stays Harry Kane if Harry Kane goes to Bayern and all these talks um which potentially may or may not break down over the next couple of days. As of recording, I don't know. I heard things on the weekend when I'm recording. I'm recording this on the Tuesday, but potentially on the Sunday or the Saturday when they did this, Bayern, I think, were looking at closing bids. So we'll see with that. But Tot Tottenham, I'm hoping Kudos Essen turns to form because he's a brilliant player. Um, but I, I'm not really clued up on Tottenham too much. Um but I'm going to go with a, um, I, I could see Brentford putting it because they're at home. But I can I can easily see a 2-1 win for Tottenham. So I'm going to go with 2-1 win Tottenham. Um, we have got two games remaining. The last game on the Sunday is the first big six clash. 
Chelsea versus Liverpool. Yes, game week number one. We have Chelsea versus Liverpool. Holy shit. How? What? How? Chelsea, without in Kink well, Christopher and Kinker, let's just say. Same touch at the end of last season, at the start of last season, so there's a pre contact for this season. Haman Gamsa Fenjin has has gone undergo has undergone a knee surgery and out for the first four months of the season, so well done, Christopher and Kunku. But they also do have uh, Nicola Jackson from Villarreal, good player. So yeah, and Liverpool, I mean, so Boschloy, so Boschloy, uh, McAllister, and a little bit of other players got, uh, got. I could see this game being a, a goal, a goal fest here. Two will draw between between Chelsea and Liverpool, and the guests. What are you saying in this game? Then this is the second game of the weekend where I feel like it's best game: Chelsea against Liverpool. Um. Now, obviously, Chelsea are signing players non-stop and is my Premier League team. I'm I'm a Bristol City fan. I'm in the Championship. Um, we've started off rough. It's one all one all draw with Preston. Um, so yeah, it's not been not been a great start, but I feel like Chelsea against a, a Liverpool team who have been struggling as well. I think these this will be a either a draw or a scrape win from one of these teams and it'll, it'll be close but I'm looking forward to seeing what Chelsea can bring with their new signings moving forward um, there's different areas and I, I'm, I'm wondering what um, Enzo Fernandez is going to bring to that midfield because obviously we got rid of Kovacic to Manchester City uh, that for that replacement for Gundogan so um, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what teams are going to prevail and push up the league this season um I wonder who's going to hit in that top four. I'm really at the minute in the predicament of who's going to fit in that top four. Um, on the other hand, Liverpool, I reckon, could push in for a top three this season. I think between them and Man United, I mean, but they against Darmstadt, they seem to put some players out. That was yesterday or Sunday's preseason game, one of the two. Um, yesterday, I think it was. They had a preseason friendly against Darmstadt, which look, looked really good to be fair. Really good game. Um, this one, I think it will be a scrape, and I think Chelsea. I'm just going to go with my Premier League team. I'm just going to go with Chelsea for a two-one win. And Chelsea Liverpool then half four on Sunday. Uh, angle my draw. Short and sweet again. Very simple. Um, I think Chelsea and Liverpool, two teams that underperformed last season. Let's see what they can both do this season. Um, obviously Pochettino now at the helm at Chelsea. Liverpool need a bounce back as well. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. But for me, I'm going with one all in this game between Chelsea and Liverpool. Now we move to the last game of the game week, which is Manchester United versus Wolves. Now, Manchester at home for the first game of the season. Let's say we brought in Andre Nana into Milan goalkeeper, former Inter Milan keeper. Mason Mount. Yes, Mason Mount is now... A man, a player, and Rasmussen Hodgland, who is a Danemarkian, who's 20 years of age, who is being compared as the next earning Halland. But he's not fit for the first few games because he's got a slight uh, stress injury, whatever. Like, it's I don't know what that's for injuries, but yeah. Wolves sacked um, Yugo Lukategi, um, the player of Yugo Lukategi, and he's been replaced by former former manager Gary O'Neill. So that's that what's happening. I mean, obviously, I've got to back my Manchester United boys here. And I'm going to say Wolves, Manchester United, Man United 3, Wolverhampton, Mondras 0, and Jack. I know that you're my United fan. I'm vague. I know you're some sort of following. The round of the match week then, obviously, it's Monday night. Man United against Wolves. I'm, I'm actually so annoyed. I'm sure... I'm sure Dan's the same, right, as a fellow United fan. We're, we're annoyed that we'll have to wait the Monday night to play our first game because you have to watch every other team play before we can even watch our own team play. But uh, nonetheless, we do have a game Monday night, home to Wolves. I predict Wolves to go down this season. They did not score many, very, very many goals last year and they do not create very many chances. So um, if they don't change that and change it quick, they're not going to stay in the league this year. So I predict a comfortable win for us. I don't want to 
jinx anything, and this this could be this could be clipped up, and uh, you know, in a couple of days, this can back and backfire on me. But I'm gonna go with a three nil United win on the opening match week. As I say, I like how fast we are in transition at the minute over the preseason games. Um, with problems in the midfield. There's no doubt about that. We, we some of the teams we played in preseason, we we major problems in the midfield in terms of. Um, just the balance, not necessarily the personnel in it, but we need, well, it is the personnel in it, it, players in it as well, it's it's having that balance, the players, there's no player in our midfield right now that we, out of our starting team that's, uh, that are bad by no means, but it's just the, 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 the actual balance we have, it's sometimes a little bit imbalanced in our midfield and we're getting play, played through too easily by the opposition, so, um, yeah, I, I, I can't see Wolves causing much of, a, much of a threat to us, and I think our, our blistering attacks, the pace we've got, Garnacho, Sancho, Rashford, Whoever's playing in that front three, personally, I'd have Rashford down the middle, and you'd have Garnacho left and Anthony right. That'd be my starting starting lineup. Obviously, we know Hoyland's injured at the minute for a few weeks, but uh, yeah, that'd be my lineup for the for front line and the the transition of those players with their pace and the midfield players that we have that play the balls through to them. Um, it's quality. So yeah, that's my that's my as I say, that's my prediction. Three 0 United over over Wolves. I think it'll be a comfortable opening match week for our boys as well. Big, big thanks to Dan for getting me back on the channel for the new Premier League predictions for the new season. Um, as I say, make sure you go and drop him a sub. Hit that like on this video. It does help him out and it gets the video obviously surfaced around YouTube to more people. And uh, yeah, pleasure as always, Dan. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers, boys. Uh, sorry if I'm moving my camera up and down or viewing deep because I'm just looking at the, the fixtures for this weekend. And moving on to the Monday night kickoff. So Monday night football will be returning as well. We got Dan's team, Man United, up against Wolves. Um, for me, Wolves are not. Uh, Wolves could just be that mid-table team. I've heard things that they've looked okay in pre-season, um, but pre-season is pre-season success. Players fit in series, get up to strength, etc. Um, on the other hand, Man United look strong. Man United, I think, will finish third this season. I do believe they'll finish behind either Arsenal. If Arsenal play the way they did against in the Community Shield, I I got Man City, Arsenal, Man United finish third for me. And then that fourth spot can vary between Chelsea. I think Chelsea, Liverpool or Newcastle will get that spot. Cause just because Newcastle are trying to bridge out, I think Newcastle will get Europa League. Anyway, so um, those are my four predictions. But Man United's strong at home, Old Trafford. Under the lights of Old Trafford, I can only see a... Honestly, I'm, I'm going to go with a 3-0 United win. Which is rare for me to say. I don't usually bet my United for big predictions. But I believe that's all the results. Um, thanks, Dan, for having me on once again. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. Um, I would like to do more of these. The last time I was on was about eight months ago. So um, thank you very much, Dan. Um, and thank you very much if you can check me out. It does mean a lot. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching the video. Guests who have been on will be back next week with game week number two of the Premier League. So until then, boys, hopefully, 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 we can have a brilliant, brilliant Premier League season, a brilliant Europe Champions League, a, a brilliant ones in all the competitions. Hopefully, your team does really well the season, and let's and let's. We've got a lot to do over the next 38 to 40 weeks of. The Premier League season. Stay tuned, like and subscribe, and I'll see you lot in game week number two. And come on, peace out.